All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we are back with deck number two of this evening. So this is going to be uh, Teamer Scape Shift. As it has come to popularity in... <laughs> now, what way do you want this song? This way. Agreed. Fair enough. What way do we want this deck? Well, we're going to play Bob the Dog's top eight version of Urian Scape Shift from this weekend's Modern Challenge. So the whole thing was taken down by Mr. Raib playing the 80 card Sultai um, Urza deck that we just played. And this is another deck that's been popping up more recently. So over the last chunk of Modern, the last three or four years since I've gotten back into the format, uh, there have been two major varieties of Scape Shift decks that were popular. There was Titan Shift, which is straight green-red, and then there was four-color Bring to Light Scape Shift, and Teamer Scape Shift occasionally existed somewhere in the middle. It's a Cryptic Command blue deck that plays lots of green acceleration, interaction in the forms of Remand and Cryptic Command, and then as a win condition, or a primary win condition, you play the card Scape Shift. This is two green-green for a sorcery, featuring some very confused fish. Uh, it says, sacrifice any number of lands, search your library for up to that many land cards, and put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. So using the card Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, which says whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under your control, if you can control at least five other mountains, you may have Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, deal three damage to any target. So if you have seven lands in play, you sacrifice them all to your escape shift. You get a Valakut, the Molten Pinnacle, and six mountains. Each mountain sees the five other mountains come into play with it, and you get 18 damage worth of triggers in denominations of three. If you have eight lands, if you have eight lands in play when you scape shift, you can get two Valakits plus six mountains and uh, womp your opponent for 36. So um, the infamous are you, what, what's your life total, is it 18 or less, scape shift uh, is sort of where those decks came from. Uh, and it's not uncommon for your opponent to take two, two, or two plus damage from their mana base in modern between the fetch lands and the shock lands. So the question is, what shell do you hang around this scape shift kill? Now the green red Titan shift decks wanted to play primeval Titan and they just had infinite numbers of cards that put more lands into play, which is a fine way to play the deck. Um, this one is more grindy and value driven and you have Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, which you can put into play and beat down with. You've got Renin 6, which can keep ticking up ultimate and then pair up with Lightning Bolt Remand and Cryptic Command to have a very powerful late game that way. And then you've got a bunch of interaction in the form of Ice Fang Quaddle, uh, Ice Fang Quaddle and the Lightning Bolts I mentioned, as well as Remand and Cryptic Command. This deck is really nicely built in terms of having a lot of four ofs. These search for tomorrows actually function down at the one slot. So if we get these lands out of this stack, which I just put here for um, the visual appeal so we can fit the whole deck onto the screen at once because Urian makes it a chonker. We've got 36 lands in the deck, 16 one drops, 16 two drops, four uh, euros, which are sort of a faux three drop, and eight four drops. So this is... Just a really, really nice, clean construction overall. And then we've got the backup Yorion Sky Nomad plan. Um, so my boy Yorion, the Bird Serpent, requires us to be playing an 80-card deck, which the Scape Shift variations kind of wanted to do already to fit in the mountain count. And now with having the Mystic Sanctuary engine in here as well, it really helps us out. We've got Ketria Triomes, which is a triple land-typed land. Um, from the Ikoria expansion that we really get to exploit a little bit because it functions both as a mountain for Valakut and an island for Mystic Sanctuary. And we have a single copy of Cavern of Souls, which is super, super wacky, but it's like a crazy mirror breaker because you can name giants to have uncounterable Uros when you're playing against other blue decks, as well as you can name Bird or Serpent if you are um, needing to resolve your Urian. Um, unfortunately, this is not a snake somehow, so you can't get any double usage out of naming snake for Ice Fang Quaddle and snake for Urian Sky Nomad. Somehow these two things are related, but they're not in the same family. Um, maybe they are from the same phylum or class. Um, anywho, we're going to be moving on into the league now. I hope my wonderful uh, animal husbandry slash biology major can confirm that uh, I talked about the 
um, the groupings of animals correctly there. Wait, Urian's not a Naga. I know, dude. I know. And somehow Naga aren't snakes. We got to get the the biology experts on this. Solve solve for me how a naga is not a snake but an orochi is. When the die roll on the first one, and we won the initiative on our pleasant greeting. Our opponent uh, did not elect to greet us pleasantly before we greeted them, so that's a big upside. Um, so we don't have any access to red mana, but we do have something to play on turn one and two, as well as we're going to fetch our red mana. Um, with this search for tomorrow. So assuming that we don't get eaten. Not gonna lie. That sounds silly. Have you seen Office Space, Roy? Because besides the fact that I think you'd really, really, really enjoy it. There's a great joke that's in the same vein as that. That uh, Dave has repeated on the on the Faithless Brewing podcast. That is right up that alley. So our opponent has no companion and leads on breeding pool. Not 100% sure what that means. I can't remember much. You should you should watch it again. I think you'd enjoy it. It's by uh, Mike Judge, the same creator as King of the Hill, who is fabulous. Ah, oh, we're against the fair... Possibly the fair Titan deck, or maybe we're against Omelette Titan. We're going to find out relatively quickly. So this is a perfect example of... This deck gets to play um, a pretty reasonable proactive plan where we get to just race up to uh, the mana that we need and just slam Escape Shift. So I think I'm going to play, put an island into play this turn because this Lightning Bolt is probably not going to be all that useful this game. That was an ideal draw. Because next turn, um, I can play Mystic Sanctuary, reset this search for tomorrow. I won't be able to play it, though. Maybe I should have gotten a forest, because we're going to need another forest for the scape shift. I might want to play Mystic Sanctuary. No, that doesn't help me. Uh, we're going to attack for one, and then maybe play this Ice Fang Quaddle before a second main phase. See if we can draw an Abundant Growth, or an Abundant Growth doesn't help me. Lands have worked out really awkwardly here with no dual lands, not even the potential of having dual lands with this hand, but hopefully we'll be okay. Dry to the Elysian Grove, sure. Without an amulet, it's going to be pretty hard for them to one-shot kill us in a single turn. So even if they get a Titan next turn, we might be able to still catch up and uh, kill them with Scape Shift. Plus a Lightning Bolt. Okay, that was a pretty good draw. That was a very good draw. So I can Mystic Sanctuary, put Search for Tomorrow on top, Arkham's Astrolabe, cast the Search for Tomorrow, and then we have Lethal next turn. Good, good. Good, good. We have Lethal actually in a whole bunch of ways next turn from this, so it's kind of great. Get a Mount Anne. Uh, we're going to attack for one here just to put them to 18. And then if they do fetch up a uh, land that gains them life next turn, we still have the Lightning Bolt. So we should be good to go here. We also have the... No, we don't have the ability to do the thing I was about to suggest. But I think we're fine. Should be fine here. We should be able to just get the kill. Opponent would need an awful lot here to um, to be able to win from this point. Just a whole bunch. Okay, that's a good good thing for us to see off the start. So they can play a Titan. Okay, they've got a Valakut, so they're going to be able to deal uh, six damage, maybe more. As long as they don't kill us, we'll be fine. <laughs> okay, so this could be 12 damage, and I think if they have another land in hand, they can kill us here. No, they'll put us to 1? I think so. 
I guess they could kill my Ice Fang and attack, but that actually nets less damage. Yeah, they're going to copy their Valakut, and then they get the extra trigger here. So they can do 18 this turn. So they did manage to come out a turn ahead of us. Let's see if we actually die. They are electing to kill my Ice Fang Quaddle, so they're going to attack. So I think, I think we live. How is Saltai Urza? We got a 4-1, um, and it, it felt not close. Although I will say um, there was a little bit of that that was uh, on variance, so um, your mileage may vary. We, we had some awkward opponents um, who weren't able to do much. Okay, looks like we got game one here. So we're going to bolt them EOT. draw another copy of scape shift which i uh i can just play tapped stomping grounds here uh we're gonna add green from a blue cast scape shift go one two yeah uh one two three four five six seven Okay, sacrifice all my lands, get one Valakut, and I think my opponent has conceded. Oh, nope, okay. So these are mountains. So one, two, three mountains, four, five, just one more uh, steam vents stomping around. Oh, let's just get the other steam vents. There we go. I like to pay two life. No, no. No. Triggers! Save target? No? Okay. Yay! Magic! So yeah, Trip 6, it was great. Uh, you can check it out on the YouTube later. Um, it's a very cool plays. Got to show off the sort of very powerful side of the Urza deck, and then sort of where it could struggle as well. Uh, okay, so Flame Slash is like an A++++ card to have in this matchup, because it kills Dry to the Elysian Grove. Aether Gust is also good. I think that's all we need here, and I'm pretty sure what goes out is literally four lightning bolts. We could keep some level of lightning bolts over something like Renin Six, which is not normally a piece of removal. So keeping more lightning bolts gives us some safety against Azusa. But I think we're good to go with this. Um, Ice Fan Quaddle's not great against them so maybe want to split the difference having them to keep drawing cards is not the end of the world though and they could surprise kill a dryad i think we're i think we're good to go like this and we won that game despite drawing zero copies of remand and zero copies of cryptic command which both would have severely derailed our opponent at multiple points we do want to watch out for them having Veil of Summer here, but they mulligan very aggressively, and they don't always um, need to keep hands that are interactive like that. They're, they might just try to go faster than us. Yeah, Sultai Urza is... I mean, the, the fair Urza decks, the non-combo Urza decks, are one of my favorite things to play. If you go back in the channel... Um, I have Urza decks going all the way back to December. Basically, as soon as Mox Opal was banned, I was playing the fair Urza decks, the, the Teemer and Sultai, or Teemer and Simic Urza decks in a bunch, bunch, bunch of different shells. So I'm a huge, huge fan of that archetype. I have it sleeved up somewhere uh, right here in my sweet Ultimate Guard archive. With my uh, battle wind windmill tokens from uh, Unstable, I love the battle windmill tokens. Uh, okay, can we keep this on the draw? Absolutely not. Ship it. Can we keep this on the draw? Probably not. Ship it. Can we keep this on the draw? I mean, it's terrible, but it's probably the best hand we've seen so far. So we just absolutely need to draw a green mana somewhere along the way here. The battle windmills. I love the battle windmills. They've even got a tiny Don Quixote in the art. Like it's it's fantastic. So the Aether Gust is what made this hand sort of 
keepable. Oh, they are playing amulets. Well, well. Okay, Ketria Triome makes this hand a good chunk better. That is our Teamer Triland. Uh, didn't miss anything that I could sideboard in to kill the amulets, so. Oh, they're going to have one of these hands, aren't they? Well, it's a good thing that we mulliganed to five in the in the game we couldn't possibly win, I guess. They bounce the breeding pool. Okay, so they have nothing else to play this turn, I guess is what they're saying. Reminds me of Don Quixote, though I can't remember the specifics of the book. Yeah, well that that is what the art and and the whole thing is a reference to on the on the um on the windmill token. As well as um the, the card Sorry, the card that it's um, that's being referenced from it is um, Knight of the Kitchen Sink from uh, Unstable. So they that's very much an intentional reference. Knight of the Kitchen Sink is a reference to Don Quixote, as is the art to that uh, windmill token. Obviously, it's not a windmill token. It's a construct token that happens to depict a, a windmill, which is also somewhat reminiscent of Howl's Moving Castle. Ghost Quarter. Okay. Ghost Quarter is a, it's a fine card to have against us. We're just trying to... My favorite Miyazaki film. Really? I would love to know what you like so much about it at some point. Because I, I... I like it fine. But it, it's just one of those movies that sometimes... like I, I watch it three or four times in my life, and there's some parts of it that are really good, and there's other parts to it where I'm like, ah, I don't. Miyazaki movies, for me, are, are wonderful experiences, and then sometimes when I try to think about them, I'm like, ah, my brain. Why? So, Ghost Quarter against Scape Shift decks is a very interesting dance. Um, one of the things that we want to know about our deck is how many basic mountains we have. So the answer is one, and it's already in play, which could be really bad. Um, if we scape shift at the wrong time, um, we could put ourselves in serious trouble there. So we definitely want to be careful as the game is going on how we treat that. Uh, I do want triple blue. However, I have this mystic... Sanctuary, uh, is there a breeding pool? Yes, and that's what I want here. So we have double green, double blue from Mystic Sanctuary. Good. That's a great draw. Uh, I have to play the Mystic Sanctuary and reset nothing. That's fine. I love the art and H. Miyazaki in general, but more importantly, I actually relate to the main character. Oh, that's, that's great. That's what it takes, usually. It's a huge, huge part of good art. What are you playing? Transmute Teleria West. Okay. Are they getting another dry out of the Elysian Grove? Because they could have just... Oh, they're going to play a Titan this turn, I guess. Yeah, they could still play a Titan. And then we're going to remand it. And then next turn, they're going to have to pay for the Pact. And I think they won't be able to Titan. Not with what they have in play, which is great. This card is very, very, very good against Titan, generally. It's not perfect, but it's generally very, very good. My opponent may or may not be struggling with their Gold Turf trigger. I wish Memory Lapse with Modern Legal. Well, I already played one. It's pretty good. Yeah, no, I mean, what is what? Did they get the wrong card? Oh, I see, I see. They're getting even more value. I mean, yeah, sure. Okay, so we know the only card in their hand is Titan. Okay, so if I draw a Cryptic Command, uh, or something that could kill one of their green sources, then we could be in an insane spot. I don't think I have any land destruction or anything like that, but... Toxic Deluge, Lead of Winter, Dead of Winter, Lol Aethergust. Yeah. If we could get the extra land. So if I top deck an Uro, could I win the game right here? I could. That's funny. 
Search for tomorrow also means I win on the spot. Yeah. Okay. This is this is pretty crazy. So let's fetch. Um, a basic. Make sure there's another basic to get with the search for tomorrow. So there's two snow covered forests. Perfect. So let's get a snow covered forest. Cast search for tomorrow. Search for tomorrow. Importantly, gets an untapped land. Which most land acceleration spells don't, but Search for Tomorrow costs four, which means you get to do that. And then they're at exactly 18, which means they're going to be exactly dead. And uh, that's all she wrote. And this is why Scape Shift is a good deck. Um, it's a lot like a Titan deck, and I think the game is locking up because I've won. <laughs> yep. Yay, magic! 2 0, baby. Magic's easy when you play the good decks. So that's interesting to note that um, Uro and um, Search for Tomorrow allow you to put lands into play untapped. So every time I clap, I feel like a seal. Yeah, that's that's exactly how I feel. Arf, arf, arf. Um, for three mana, Uro and Search for Tomorrow allow you to, with six lands in play... Um, win the game. So when you have five lands in play, your next turn can be land, Uro, or search for tomorrow, scape shift, win the game. So that's definitely a way a way to just blow people out. And that is pretty important to have in modern. I mean, personally, I like playing the decks where, you know, my, my play that turn wouldn't have been scape shift to kill you. It would have been Jace the Mind Sculptor to stay in the game. But, you know, there's a lot of value to just winning the game on the spot, I suppose, if you... If you need to feel like, you know, that kind of person, I guess. Personally, I like to futz around a lot longer and draw more cards and play more nonsense. Slap down more cardboard. Winning is so inconvenient. Exactly, because then that means the game's over. But it also feels like it really takes a lot of the a lot of the story out of some of these games because like a lot of the time it's just going to be like so yeah to tell a long story short I uh, cast scape shift and then they died it's like you know you didn't there was no journey to that victory you were just like oh I had seven lands and they were at least less less than eighteen and they died like yeah. So yeah, winning winning is inconvenient, definitely. Freed Mania on the play. One of the drawbacks of having an I win, win button. Yeah, exactly. And I think this hint is phenomenal. So, and I think too, if you um, if you think about the way that you and I, Roy, uh, look at this game differently, okay, we're against the Luris deck here. Cool. Uh, if you look at the the way that we sort of I don't know interface with Magic differently, like you have an incredibly detail um, driven recollection of a lot of your games compared to let's call my looser interpretation of the uh, the events. Okay, do I want to search for tomorrow on one, then have remand on two? And then on three, I can play tap land and still be able to cast an arrow. Yeah, okay. Um, this means I'm not interacting with their board, but I think that's probably okay. Just making sure I have guaranteed acceleration. It's one of the perks of being a neuronic. <laughs> Deal with it. Um, yeah, but... Um, but what I was what I was getting towards was the fact that I get these long um, sort of broad strokes journeys to victory. You know those those are a lot of the games that I like to play. Whereas yours are very small, very detail focused. Like there was like eight or nine different micro decisions that were made on the early turns of the game that that took everything to where it was on turn four. Um, and that speaks to the kind of decks you like to play. So, 
Whereas I often have a more, uh, you know, hippy dippy holistic view of how a game is going. Turn five. Never. Hey, where you're going, you won't need turn fives. Bobble. They can't remand that. Well, I can, but it's really not a good idea. I hope they play Luris this turn. Oh, they might, because they just played a Bobble. Second Bobble. Oh, that's so rude. Ooh. Ooh, goodness gracious. Remember that thing where I didn't play the Lightning Bolt earlier? Yeah, that... That might have been a mistake. Okay. They're probably playing Luris this turn. If I had to guess. Because they want to replay one of these baubles. We're going to remand it, which is real good. Mana Morphos. Okay, so if I remand this, uh, then they won't be able to go any further. So we're going to do that, because otherwise we might literally die. So this is pretty pretty interesting. I had seen this deck, and I think this was the highest performing Black Red Luris deck from the challenge, was the, this version that was playing Mana Morphos. They have a bolt here. It's going to be gross. Oh, my God. So we're taking 11, 12, 13, 14. We just took 14 damage on their turn three. Gross. If I had bolted, it would have been maximum of nine. So that is how much the micro decisions that uh, I was talking about that Roy makes so wonderfully well. That's how much those matter. Um, ba basically by an amount of death. Death. Dear Lord. Yeah, exactly. That was very much a dear Lord kind of situation. Okay, so I can get a mountain. Then I can play Uro off a of basic play the Ketria Triome and kill one of their creatures, which means I'm less likely to die next turn. So I think we're going to do that. I think we just want to minimize risk where we can here. And then we'll have Cryptic up the next turn, so we might, 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 might be able to make it through this. So if we get one acceleration spell next turn, actually, we, we can win this, which is which is pretty nuts. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So if we top deck another Uro or another search for tomorrow, we could win this game as we did in the previous round. Um, do I want to kill their Abbot right now? I don't think so. So I'm happy for them to Thoughtseize or Inquisition here. I'm especially happy for them to Inquisition here. Um, or if they play the Luris without knowing that I'm going to have any inter interaction for them, then... Oh, right, they've got the Manamorphose. Okay, so once that resolves, I can't guarantee that I can kill this Abbot, so we're going to do it now. And then hopefully we survive this turn. There's a, there's a decent chance we don't, but I think I gave myself the best, the best possible here. We can also just play the Uro next turn. We can, out of the graveyard. So that... That's reasonable. And we get to reset the lightning bolt before we do. Do they have a second Manamorphose, or are they still... Yeah, they have a second Manamorphose. Good gravy. So they could play Luris and play the Bobble and hit me for at least four. If they have any other burn spell, I'm just dead. Doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. Okay, we dodged, we dodged our doom. We dodged immediate death. We might still die on the uh, die on our upkeep. Although at that point I'll have access to Crypto Command, so maybe not. Are they gonna put me to one? I guess so. They had the burn spell all along. You didn't need to play the bobble then. What did you? What you did? You had that in your hand already. Frickin' nerd. No, we, we didn't we didn't have a stay of execution. They they had they had everything. They just really, really, really over sequenced it. <laughs> yeah, they just like really went off the deep end there. Okay, so these are all A plus. I don't know about Aethergust. Veil of Summer also, I'm not sure, because they didn't they didn't play a lot of discard in that game. I think Cryptic Command is probably better on the play than it would be on the draw. Remand is generally going to be kind of poor in this matchup, I think. 
Red and six is okay because they have the Abbot of Carol Keep. So I think this is where we want to be. I now know what people felt like when I taught them how to call a moose. Good, good, good. This, this is well. You've, you're up and says come, Roy. All right. Uh, I think we're good to go like this. Gustworth. I don't think so. I mean, maybe, but I, I, I just don't know what I'd cut for it. Maybe Abundant Growth, because this is a 36 land deck, so I don't need so much churn and grind. That's probably fair. Um, maybe even get the Flame Slashes in here instead of the other two Abundant Growths. That's probably okay. Abundant Growth's important. Explain why. For colors? I think I'm good on colors. I think I'm generally fine on colors, I think. Allows us to play basics instead of shocks. Yeah, okay. Okay. Ice Fang is not the best piece of interaction here because they're almost always going to have an extra burn spell. So, in fact, with your logic, let's try it that way. Gets my curve a little lower, too. That's why those storms are supposed to be here. But yeah, I think I, think I like this setup. I think Waddle's super awkward in these matchups because it's like a crazy, crazy blowout when it lands, but it's just never going to land. We certainly are better set up post-board than we were pre-board. Yorion. Uh, hand is banging. Keep. Um, probably playing a tapped stomping grounds on one. And then on two, I can fetch an island, play the Abundant Growth on the island, and then have Flame Slash ready to go. So, assuming that they don't hit me with this sick discard, we'll be fine. And even if they do, I have double removal spells, so we're, we're, we're in a good spot. Might end up enchanting a fetch land. Ah, uh, maybe. Probably not. I mean, we can. It's certainly a thing you can do. Yep. I wonder if they take the scape shift this early. I really doubt it. Probably take the abundant growth, but we'll see. Flame slash or lightning bolt also seem likely. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, gotcha. I don't know if I was supposed to bring in Veils in this matchup. It's weird. Okay. Sure, why not? Uh, we do want to keep digging as much as possible to find Search for Tomorrows and Uros, because those get us into uh, game-winning amounts of lands in play. Add it. Sure. Draw Ran and Six. Ran and Six. Ran and Six. Ran and Six. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> bobble, crack, bobble, play Lurisks. Play Bobble, please. Maybe. Sick. Sick! The reason we're excited about that is that's really not an impressive play for their deck. That is not where they want to be. It's reasonably good card advantage, but it's just... Uh... Slow. So do I just want to cryptic bounce their Luris here? It's like the biggest play. And then on the next turn, like the most devastating thing that they could do is like play like double swift spear, manamorphose. But then they won't be able to play the Luris again, so that the bobble in play, I mean that's all they have. They could replay the Abbot next turn if I don't do anything about the Luris, so. Oops. 
Why would you main phase a cryptic? What what do you want me to do? Upkeep it? I want to bounce it back to their hand before they play anything with it. I guess I could do it during their upkeep, but I don't see that that has particular value other than opening me up for them to do something about it. Sure. Flip Collective Brutality. If they have a land, they can Brutality my scape shift here. Which is uh, not bad. But then I can fetch, reset it, <clears throat> and pick it up with Astrolabe. So, this is fine. There's a good chance we're just going to play Uriah in this turn and draw two. Obviously, if I wait a turn, I could draw three. I thought waiting for them to cast something was our best bet. However, I understand why you main phase the Cryptic now. Yeah, I think I think it was fine. So I could... Oh, I can reset Cryptic and pick that up. Yeah, I have three islands in play. Good. Let's do that. This is your Ryan. Yo, he's gonna be beast. Sky Noodle's gonna come in here and just be like, yo, cards. I heard you like card advantage, dog. So counterbounce for the tempo play. <sighs> that does give them access to more cards. I should probably just counter draw. Although them having access to, more, access to more cards is probably not a big deal. One Abbot of Carol Keep in play is also not a big deal. If they play Luris, they get to play a Bobble and attack me for three. I don't really care. I guess I could let this resolve. Because they're going to want to play whatever they flip. And then they can also still play their Luris. And I can still draw into an Anger of the Gods. Flips cling to dust. Oh no, my scape shift. Okay, that's a little unfortunate. However, if they play this, I can pretty freely counter it because what is red? I can pretty freely counter the cling to dust. Swiss beer. Okay. So I can counter the cling to dust, tap their team, or no, I'll just counter draw and take two from the Swiss beer. And then next turn, next turn we get to do good things. Okay. Um, they do not have enough cards in their graveyard to replay that, so let's just counter draw. Oh, hold on. Wait, yeah, they're playing it. Oh, they're gonna get to attack me for five. Tap counter, yeah, probably. Are you okay taking five? I think I am. I think I'd rather see one more card. Because I could just win the game on the spot next turn. If I draw a row or... Yeah. We'll see. We still have the Anger of the Gods. A couple of Anger of the Gods in this deck, so... If we draw one of those, we get to just eat them alive. Tap land, okay. So Growth Spiral, Search for Demoro, Uro, those were all winners. Um, we could still Astrolabe into Growth Spiral and win the game, but I think I could play Flame Slash, reset that now. Okay. I could play Uriah and Flame Slash this turn. Yeah, that's probably the right thing to do. Hold on to the Astrolabe. Yeah, okay. Do, 
doot. Forest is fine here. Yeah. Sky Noodle. Okay, we want to draw the Force of Negations that aren't in my deck. That would be pretty ideal. Uh, forest. Draw three. Dude. Sanctuary not worth. Um, not not this turn, because I have this Astrolabe still. And now I have the Ketri Triome. So, yeah, but I, I want to be able to reset the Scape Shift. If they spend their whole turn casting Cling to Dust to take the Scape Shift out of my graveyard, I'm okay with that. Um... Because we can just sit here and dirtle for a while. Okay, this is one of the dangerous starts of these turns. Because um, we can still Sanctuary here next turn. Like, our plan next turn is to go Sanctuary, Scape Shift. So if they don't take the Scape Shift out of my graveyard, we can kill them next turn. So them starting on Manamorphose doesn't mean necessarily that they have the kill here. Abbott also doesn't mean anything in particular. I think they are, they already played a land, so if they'd flipped a land there, they wouldn't be able to cast it. They got pretty lucky to flip a Swift Spear. They have Lurus in hand still. That's only one more spell. So I think we survive this turn, and then we go Fetch, Reset, Scape Shift, play Arkham's Astrolabe, and kill them. So I think we're good. If this is Lurus, we're golden. Yep, we're golden. Cryptic in hand, we have two attacks with Urian. Well, we're just going to win in one go, so... I, th I think that's probably better. And the Sky Noodle's not even going to die. Yay, Sky Noodle. So I think, I think we're good. I think I made a reasonable set of decisions. I'm not saying the Cryptic line wasn't, wasn't good. I'm just... I stuck to the game plan that I had, and it looks like it's fine. And even if they thought seized me, I have enough mana to fetch Mystic Sanctuary, cycle Ketria Triome... And then pick up escape shift and kill them. So like, they don't even get to know how how horribly I could have blown them out this game too. I know my deck's like, yo dog. I know you already won, but let let me let me let me help you out here. Let me let you know just how badly you could have won. You could have won by even more, dog. Even more. Escape shift, green, green, blue, blue. Um, I don't have to sacrifice all my lands because uh, I have two mountains in play here. I didn't tap those, so it doesn't really make sense. Um, so if I get Valakut and three more mountains, um, sorry, four more mountains, one, two, three, four, five. So we're sacking five. I get Valakut plus four cards that are mountains. And then we win because they're at nine. So I want to make sure that I know how to do the sort of variety of kills here, I guess. Ketria Triome. Just need to make sure that everything I get is a mountain. Get more steam vents. No. 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 And again, in order to be optimal there, I should have um, let's save targets. In order to be optimal there, I should have um, made sure that every single uh, oh sorry, I should have tapped the lands before I um, before I cast the scape shift um, so that I could play the aether gust afterwards if I wanted to. But that's fine. Okay. Um, I think the cryptics are still good to have on the dr or do I want to go like all cryptics out for all remands? That seems overboard. Might scientician split it. And then maybe we'll cut a Renin 6 or 
two for the other remans. Renin six is okay because it can kill Abbot of Carol Keep. So I want slightly more of them. I haven't drawn any yet. You know what? I, I, yeah, I think almost everything else I could have is better. Reman stopping Lurus is just a big, big, big tempo gain. Same with um, Abbott, depending on what turn they're playing in Abbott of Carol Peep. And this is one of those decks that kind of gets a boost from playing 80 cards rather than 60. And I don't I don't remember what the number was, but apparently there was a trend of scapeshift decks playing it was like 68 cards because they needed a higher mountain count, so they just upped their deck in percentages. I forgot to ask, do you think memory lapse is too good for modern? No, it's not. I don't think so. Can I keep this hand in this matchup? We'll see if they mulligan. Um They turn one, discard spell me, we're in a trouble spot. This hand sucks. Fine. This is much better. Okay, 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 Roy. You can just pipe down back there. All right, I think we're bottoming escape shift. Because we'll find one of those by the time we need it. Um, but this hand is much, much better. It's not great. It's not ideal. They didn't have turn one discard, so hooray for that. Six. Six cards in hand. I think you mean six plus a noodle. Six and some spaghetti. I love you, you're Ryan. You, you beautiful beast. Okay, so we're gonna have weather the storm up next turn, assuming that they don't have sick discard here. Seal of fire. Oh, oh, oh. So glad that we cut the Ice Fan Quaddles in this game. Anytime you're going to see a Seal of Fire, it's just oof. They targeted me. I'm not sure what they're looking for. Okay, they don't have Discard? I wonder if they have anything else. Maybe they have a Bolt that they're holding. Well, regardless, we're just going to play Snow Covered Island and pass the turn back. There's a chance we just... I want Japanese Ramen now. Okay, I'm not sure what, ha my, what, what made that happen, but I'm okay with it. So if they play Luris and Bobble, we can weather the storm, gain nine. Or I can Aether Gust their mage this turn. I think Aether Gust for, or uh, weather the storm for nine seems pretty okay. Oh, Sky Noodle. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. And then next turn we get to play an island, and then I can Growth Spiral, Mystic Sanctuary, reset something, and play Aether Gust. So, okay, seems good. And we still have time to dig for my boy, um, Anger of the Gods. Early Anger would be great here, although I need to make sure that I have double red when it comes up. So let's just do this now. Pretty sure I want to do this now. Yeah. I don't know. I'm only taking two here. Would I rather Growth Spiral this turn and have Weather Aether Gust next turn? I think so. Yeah. How much are we taking? Two. So I don't think I need to interact with it. And Weather the Storm for nine is, is good. But if I can accelerate this turn, it's probably better. Especially if I flip something like that. Good anger of the gods this turn if we draw it. Game day bucket go boom. Ah, that's fine. So we're in a really, 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 really good spot. Uh, we just there. Are, I'd rather spiral this turn. Yep, we did. We did that. We did the thing. Mishra's bobble. Nice draw, nerd. It's all right. I mean, it doesn't stop this bobble shenanigans from happening, but. So we're probably going to Aether Gust Soul Scar Mage this turn unless they play something. Wow, sack. Okay. Okay, so they don't have any black mana left, so remand here is actually 
a one turn counter spell, which is pretty good. Free storm count, exactly. So we're gonna get 12 this turn. That's nasty. Thick and nasty. The lifelink might end up being relevant later. They played another spell. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's so good. All right. All right, gain 15. Skadoosh. Whee! Might even reset it. Yeah. So I can reset it now. If I reset Reman, I can play two Remans next turn. If I reset Growth Spiral, I can play Remand, Growth Spiral, Aether Gust. Yeah, okay. So we're going to look to get to eight lands this game, most likely, because they've gained up to 21 with the Lurus. Lurus. You got it. We're 24. We've outstripped their meager life total. What are you going to do? Swing for seven? Okay, so we're going to reman this, then grow spiral, and then Aether Gust, and we'll have no spells. I guess they get another prowess trigger, but I think I'm okay with that. But we will see what we draw off this. And we get to see what we draw before we... Oof. I guess I can reset the... I can't reset the Aether Gust. Reset the Reband? Too chicken to put anything apart from Weather the Storm on top. That's fair. That's fair. Put Weather the Storm on top. And then we're going to Aether Gust, Soul Scar Mage. And then we're going to have nothing for their Thought Seize to take, and we're going to take six this turn. And we're going to have a Weather Storm up in hand next turn. So enjoy. Enjoy, opponent. Here's my hand. Jazz hands. And now we're basically guaranteed to get to eight lands. And once we're on eight lands, if we draw a Scape Shift, we're going to hit them for 36. So, you know. <laughs> in the words of a magic player in my generation, so, you know. So, you know. All right, I'm going to play this out and get my third Mystic Sanctuary, which would probably get Growth Spiral. I'm going to get anything. Also worth remembering, if I end up with nothing to do next turn, I could just cast Urion. Probably should have played Urion this turn. It's a pretty good brick wall against their deck. Okay, they know I have Weather the Storm in hand now, I guess, so... But if I draw the Growth Spiral, then I sort of get to set myself up. So. I'll take your five. Pathetic. Uh, do I want to reset this growth spiral and guarantee that I have a card to play? Probably. Because next turn, like, I'm going to be 12. Well, I'm at 11 now. So, I think guaranteeing that I'm drawing a spell here is not the worst thing in the world. And I have another land to, well, I'm not going to have another land to drop in. But I could. Let's see. We will see. Random draw could give us something to blink with Urian, though. Yeah. I think I'm happy to wait until their turn, and then when they try to do stuff, we're gonna play Growth Spiral Weather the Storm. That said, I have five, six, seven, eight mana. So just playing Urian into Weather the Storm here, go to 17 is not the end of the world. Sky Noodle is really good here, right? Is it? No, I think I'm happy to pass the turn. 
there's just so many good draws in this deck right now. Like it's it's a completely gross number of, of good draws in the deck right now on their turn. I like your pass line. Me too. It's just like they're incentivized to play a bunch of spells before combat to try to kill me. Um, obviously, if they have the exact correct combination of burn spells in their hand, um, then they can get us here. But we should be okay. okay. Tap land, sure. Goes to combat. Okay. So I think before they hit, I'm going to play stuff. Uh, let's fetch a forest. Just do a little thinning. Like my hairline, it's a little bit of thinning, but it's good. Just a little bit of thinning. Thinning is fine. Why not just wait? Well, if I go to five, and their hand, they have a fistful of birds. Like I'm, I can gain nine right now, right? Um, whereas if I go to five, it's much easier for them to kill me. Like if they have lightning bolt seal of fire, they kill me. So I, I can't, I don't think we can wait anymore. I think if I wait any longer, it's just way too likely for me to die. They have seal of fire in play. So I really don't think that that's a viable strategy. Whereas like getting to lightning bolt me before combat only adds one damage right now. So I'm trading... A percentage chance to gain more life for being stuck in a place where I'm literally dead. So there it is. So that they had the bolt. So they do get to do a one extra damage with that bolt right now, but they would have killed me in response if I had not done the thing that I did there. So we really need to draw Uro or is it Brutality. Okay. This is Brutality. We're we're in a rough spot. We do get to play Urian next turn, which can block a bunch. Hopefully we pick up something like Astrolabe or... How would they have killed you in response? They do, You cast... Okay, so I cast Growth Spiral, right? Let Growth Spiral resolve. Then let's say I cast Weather the Storm. Weather the Storm plus the Storm Trigger on the stack. Because Assuming that I take five, right? Let's assume that I took the combat damage, right? So I'm at five now. So I wait until their end of turn... And then I cast Growth Spiral, and then I cast Weather the Storm, and they hit me for five in response. Or, if I let that turn clear, then I lose all the storm count, and I'm stuck at five. And I have to keep my mana up, all my mana up forever. Okay, so we're going to play Uriah this turn, and hope it's good enough. Here's my four five. Like, I'm pretty sure that's a pretty clear line of how I'm dead there. I don't... Yeah. The One of the things is that maybe I should have played this Uriah earlier. Because now, if it just dies, yeah. Oh, there's a freaking Soul Scar Mage in play. I forgot that there was a Soul Scar Mage. Yep. So Uriah doesn't even get to uh, block in any meaningful way. It is unfortunate. It's going to block the Luris. On the plus side, we have another land in hand. So while they are going to go to 33, and they could even go to 36, if I... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, with 9 lands in play, the escape shift kill does 42. So... Yep. All right. We, we got another turn. Uro? Anything? Cryptic's good. Cryptic's real good. Okay. So tap draw is where we're at. We do have the instant win button still hanging out in the deck, so... I wonder if they're going to start playing the seal of fire to whittle me down. Yep. That's not a good sign. Okay, tap your team, draw a card. Skadoosh. So hopefully they have <laughs> one bolt in hand. Oh, that's such a bad draw. Okay, somehow we're not dead. Their deck is pretty creature 
focused. So, Uro, please, one time. Okay, 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 wheel spinning, wheel spinning. Like a fine bicycle, our wheels are spinning. Escape shift. Oh, it's death. All right, didn't get there. Did not get there. Close one. Close, close, close one. Well, let's see how close it was. Like, we, 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 we were able to stay in that for a lot of turns. Oh, wow. Okay, we weren't getting there. No Uros all the way down. It's like they're not even in my deck. I always find this funny sometimes when you when you do one of these. You're like, I'm looking for one. Still no. Okay. We're almost through half the deck. Oh, there it is. It was like the 40th card. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, we played a good game. Nothing to be upset about, my friend. Nothing to be upset about. Okay. See you in a minute. Boop. All right, match number three. We're cooking along tonight. Head of schedule. Red wine vinegar, what a name. And we are on the play. Very nice. Okay, a plus hand. Let's keep this one. So turn one, suspend search for tomorrow. Turn two... Astrolabe, suspend other search for tomorrow. Seems pretty good. We can get a breeding pool on one, basic island on two. Opponent is on a Gigantha deck. Okay, so this is either humans or five color Niv Mizzet or Tron. Those are the most likely decks to be playing Gigantha in the current modern climate. So Saffron Olive once did a, a very clever article uh, about the modern format saying how to. Uh, guess what what your what deck your opponent is on from their very first land drop, um, which is a pretty vital piece of information sometimes. Um, and then the upshot of that, or the logical extension of that, is in the in today's climate. Now that you get to see a companion before you make your mulligan decisions, yeah. So Tron, um, you get to try to extrapolate what they're on at that point. So we have a pretty good set up overall in the deck against um, Tron. We'll see if it works out this game. We do have to draw some of our interactions, so. Uh, grow Spiral's okay. And Uro. So we're gonna, we're going to be able to put out an awfully huge number of lands very quickly. The question is if they are going to have um, Karn to start killing our lands. Okay, so they don't have turn three Tron. That's a huge, huge difference in how this game is going to go. Um, quite almost unfathomably, unfathomably large. Okay, so we've got two search for tomorrows. This one's actually coming off suspend, so we're going to cast this. Turns out that magic isn't poker meets chess. What? What are you talking about, Roy? It's guess who meets Monopoly. Oh, I love it, but I hate it. Okay, so if I growth spiral, I put a land in, then I can play another land, and then I can play my Uro, so I can get a grotesque number of lands into play in a single turn. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so I have to play the Uro. So let's put in Prismatic Wista. And we get Gland. 
Uh, forest is probably okay. Yeah. Play my land for turn. Play the Uro. Trigger. Draw a card. We're looking for one of our remands or... Okay. Sure. Um, put the Mystic Sanctuary into play. Mystic Sanctuary puts Growth Spiral on top. It's probably okay. And then we can filter for green. Cast a search for tomorrow. So it's turn three, and I have six lands in play. And one card in hand. So both teams going hard on the land drops. Um, opponent might have only one third of Tron going on, which is kind of cute. Uh, it's not often that you see Tron struggle this hard. So this is an interesting game from that, from that sort of perspective. Next turn, at minimum, we can go fetch a row, but we also have a growth spiral on top, so should be able to find something better to do. Okay, so here's their second Tron land for sure. And there's the third Tron land. Of course, they're only going to have five mana next... We, we are going to have Search for Tomorrow's coming off suspend, like forever it's been a weird weird moment or a weird weird game the way it's all worked out it's kind of funky i like it okay draw for turn just draw escape shift no okay fine maybe next time uh growth go there did i shuffle somewhere and not have the growth spiral on top i guess i did what a goofball what an ultra maroon uh all right so I don't. Do I want to thin before I cast this arrow? I guess so, because I can't. I, I don't realistically want to reset any of these cards. So let's just get a Ketria Triome, and then play the arrow. Green, blue, blue, green. Wait, I still have. I have four Ren and sixes in this deck. Search shuffled. Yeah, I screwed up. I know, I know. I have a lot more mana than Tron would. Oh, uh, if I shock this, I can't. Okay, but it doesn't matter because they shouldn't. They shouldn't be able to disrupt disrupt my scape sh shift with five mana, um, unless they have naturally drawn their third Tron land here. They're gonna have a maximum of five mana to use post Tron because they have to use the forest and one of the Tron lands to fetch the third piece. Um. So we should be safe. If if they have the Tron, and if they have Karn, they can plus Karn take the last card out of my hand. Sylvan Scrying. Okay, so they're going to have... Why did they cast Sylvan Scrying rather than cracking the map? Because they want to crack... Oh, because they want to crack the map with the... Okay, it's not going to matter because I'm going to kill them. But, but it was neat. Man, I'm going to kill them by so much. I mean, I could. I don't obviously I don't need to. But like, this is hilarious. This is a grotesque overkill. Fall of the Thran. <laughs> if they if they had the the planes off the top. Just nail me with the fall of the Thran. <laughs> wow. My my deck really wanted to beat them. It's just like, yo, you know how you have good cards in this matchup? Yo, we got you. It's a mountain, mountain, mountain. So one, two, three. We're just gonna tap everything that isn't a mountain. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, we'll tap this one two. Wait, does this mean I can get? Oh no, no, no! Hold on, we're in, we're in, we're in declare blockers. Okay. Yay, magic online. Oh, so they're they're at fourteen. That's right. Okay, good. We'll just cast Escape Shift and kill him. We have one, two, three mountains in play. So I only need to get three mountains and two Valakits. So let's get six lands. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, seven for safety. Just get everything that isn't a mountain off here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. With two Valakits and five mountains.
Triggers. Uh, no, I don't want to pay two life for the things that are going to come into play tapped anyway. Okay. Uh, save targets. You. Uh, okay. Yes. Sorry. Always yes. Yield until end of turn. Always yes. Yield until end of turn. Because I have two Valakids, so I needed to do it twice. They need an egg plus complete Tron plus fall of the Thran. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. I mean, they have eggs. But... So Aethergust is something I can bring in. But to be perfectly honest with you, yeah, okay, Aethergust is a little bit better than Lightning Bolt. Not much, but it's a little bit better. I think that's it. Uh, I think, generally speaking, we have a pretty good setup against them. We just need to dodge Veil of Summer. And I suppose Aethergust is good to have against both the Veil itself as well as some of their green spells like Sylvan Scrying and Gigantha. Uh, one of the things to look out for is if their companion is still in the friend zone post board because they could bring in something. Uh, against our deck, I don't know what they would bring in because um, they're... <laughs> Green Tron doesn't normally play Chalice in the sideboard. Green Tron might play Dismember in the sideboard, but they're not likely to bring that in. So, As I brought up previously, I don't think that they're particularly likely to... Um... Uh, this hand is a little crazy, but I'm good to keep this. I just need one more land. Ren 6 should get me there. We are playing a very high density of lands in this deck, so it's a little sketchy, but I think this is fine. It's obviously not as hilariously turbocharged as the last one. Opponent kept on 7, which is equal parts terrifying and heartening. Okay, I want to get green, basic green on this first one, um, because I want to cast this Ren 6 next turn if at all possible. Which means I need green and or red untapped coming up here. Oof. Yeah, I drew a land, but it, it didn't really help me do what I wanted to do. So we'll see if this ends up being a problem. Aww. Aww, look at him! I don't know why this is a promo art for this, but I'm okay with it. Look at him! Why is he stirrings and why is he ancient? I don't understand. The kitty looks so young and fresh. Okay, so what did they pick up? They picked up... Um, power plant? And then they played it. So there's a good chance they have Tron. I left and I came back. You didn't know about this, Roy? They made a promo ancient stirrings and it's really, 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 really adorable. Why isn't there a companion zone on a magic card? <laughs> That's what Luris looks like when he's in the companion zone, but once he comes into play, he's a lot, a lot grosser. Okay, so we're going to play Cavern. We're going to name, I don't know, Giant. Because they're not likely to play any counter magic. We do have to dodge them. Um... We do have to dodge them just sort of eating us this turn, but there's nothing I can do about that other than leaving up mana. So on their turn, we can play Growth Spiral, play the tapped Ketria Triome. On my turn, I can play Ren and Six, pick up a land, play a land. Okay, they've got Tron. So this is Karn. We're in big, 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 big trouble. It's Karn. We're in big, 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 big trouble. Uh, assuming that they go after our lands here, we're going to be in a state. Yeah, of course. So green and... Oops, sorry. Green and colorless. We're going to filter the colorless into blue. We'll play Grow Spiral. Actually, we get to bolt the Karn, so maybe we'll be okay. So play Ren and Six, pick up the land, play the land, fetch and bolt. So maybe we'll be okay. In terms of how this could be going, this is not the worst. I mean... They stone rain me for seven, but you know, that happens. I'm going to fetch shock a steamy vents here. We definitely need to pick up um, something. 
These astrolabes, man. We we drew astrolabe Tron in our eighty card deck. Like, what is even happening? It's a good thing we left in some number of lightning bolts, I guess. This is Orion's gonna be insane. If we ever get to five mana, yeah, I guess. On the plus side, their Ugin is not gonna be that good if they have an Ugin. What is this for green and two? Sylvan Scry? No. Still t Oh, Gigantha. That's adorable and totally fine. Yo dog. Get there. Elk it. Elk, elk, elk it up. Oh no. No. Stop playing things. Oh wait, that's fine. Probably gonna get a blast zone. I don't think Orion's gonna be insane anymore because I think this is getting a blast zone. <laughs> okay, Gigantha is gonna be able to kill my red insect. Wow, the Orion just keeps getting nuttier, huh? Okay. So let's go ahead and pick up this land. Play Misty. Turn Misty into... I only have two islands in play, so I, I probably just want another island here. Blast Zone on five, they kill their companion too. No, I, I meant Blast Zone on one, dude. Blast Zone on one to kill all my, my draw cards. Blast Zone on one is easy. They don't, they don't need to try it, and they're just going to wipe, wipe out my board. Yeah, that's what I... Wow! Good God almighty. That's one heck of a draw here. Okay, that's a good one. So, blue, green, filter blue, play growth spiral, put the misty in. That's a little unfortunate with the timing. I could reset the growth spiral and then oh, I'll see. See how much anything matters. Maybe nothing even matters. Anyone can see. What if they get forest? Sanctum of Ugin. That's bad news. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they have ten mana. So they could play cause like this turn, which is just the worst. Okay, so they're gonna play cause like this turn, which is just the worst. Maybe it's walking blista. Hopefully it's Walking Blista. Emrakul. Uh, I have a Scape Shift in my hand. Uh, I think we're good here. For, for anyone who's not aware, if they play our turn for us, they get to uh, play the scape shift and sacrifice all of our lands and um, and then just be done. They can just sacrifice all lands, search the library, and be like, I don't find it. There's no lands in here. What, what, I don't know what's happening. And then we have nothing left. So that was pretty good, though, considering that we got turn three Karn on the play. We were kind of in that. So that was cool. Like... In terms of the hand we capped, in terms of the way it all played out, in terms of the fact that they just snapped off turn three Tron with a seven card hand, like, what are you going to do? Uh, this is not great, but fine. Again, we know our land is, our deck is land heavy. So we're going to play um, Basic Forest, Search for Tomorrow on one. Hopefully, we pick up a land to play this Ren and Six on two immediately. It's actually not a problem if we miss, because we can just play Abundant Growth or Astrolabe. Hopefully, um, the Abundant Growth or Astrolabe draws us the land that we do need, and then we can play the next one. Uh, so we're going to play the Astrolabe for sure. They Did they keep their seven? They kept their seven. They kept their seven, but they played nothing with their first land drop. Okay, boom. Got it. Cool. So I think we're playing Astrolabe and Growth this turn. The alternative is to hold the Aether Gust in case they go Green Source Sylvan Scrying. But if they play Green Source Sylvan Scrying, that means they're going to have turn four Tron anyway. So I think I'd rather draw two cards here and try to find a Remand or a Cryptic Command, which we're going to need in short order. 
or more ramp. We're going to get to ramp next turn anyway. So let's play Lab. Draw a card. Abundant growth. Draw a card. Just looking for a remand or a cryptic command. Remembering that we do get to search for tomorrow on the next upkeep. They just drew up natural Tron, I'm guessing. Must be. So I have to cast this. Yay. All right, we're going to get an island. Okay, that is not a piece of interaction. So we're going to play Steam Vents. And I think we're just going to sit because if we have to dig for Remand, we're going to play Grow Spiral, drop in a land. Um, if for some reason they play a green spell this turn, which is possible, we're going to have to... Um, Oh, we're gonna we're gonna be able to aether gust that relic. That is that is fine. That is amazingly fine. How did I get so lucky? Jeez, woof. They they kept a hand that was just gonna try to natty Tron, and then yeah, okay, sure. I mean, I guess. Hold on. If I draw a remand, I would run. I want to remand this and then um, Aether Gust it on the next turn. No, okay. I just Aether Gust it now. I wait with you. Shoot, out damn spot. We're certainly gonna try, Roy. We're certainly gonna try. We've got this bolt to get them down to 18 or less, so that's kind of good. We're gonna fetch a Ketria Triome here proactively because this can't this land cannot get um, a Mystic Sanctuary. Aether Gust again. Seems alright. Ren and six will get me a land drop, which I still haven't made yet. Misty Rainforest gets me the Mystic Sanctuary, which I would like. And if we want to reset anything that is in my graveyard right now, we have to do it now. But I don't actually think there's anything that's that important to reset. Um, growth Spiral is fine, but it's actually not a huge upside. So, pretty happy to lose a fetch land per turn right now. So if they just snap off the Tron here, no Tron. Let me have an Aether Gust again. Sick. No Tron for you, nerd. Although they put it on top, so so maybe maybe they will. Although we could reset our Aether Gust, but then they can relic me in response. So. I wonder if I'm supposed to. I think I'm supposed to force the action here. Cause I don't I don't really want the Aether Gust on top anyway. Um so I'm more than happy to have this happen. So let's see what happens. If they relic me here, we're just going to play Ice Fang and we're going to dig for something else. Perfect. So we used a Mystic Sanctuary out of our deck, but we didn't really even need it there. Although I guess I lost the Misty Rainforest, so I don't get to make a land drop with Renin Six. So maybe that's significant. Pick up a search for tomorrow. Escape Shift? Not Escape Shift. Okay. Desperation time. Well, I guess we'll attack for one. Eighth thing. So they're going to get to search, and then they'll have up to seven mana. Which is the whole thing. Oh, I can Uriah this turn and draw three. Why am I always kind of forgetting that I have the Sky Noodle? I haven't played with enough Uriah decks. I freaking love these decks. This is so sweet. Can I just, can I tell you how much I freaking love this card? This is the best thing ever. Just play my value game. Oh yeah, go ahead. Just get some more value, dude. Don't forget about your Pokemon. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Who's that Pokemon? It's Urian. Urian. 
feel like it's like a giant ass dragon, so it'd have a pretty, pretty messed up, scary voice. Okay, just need to draw a scape shift here, friends. Come on. That, it's fine. You can make it the last one. Okay. Okay. There's no card in Tron that immediately shuts us down. Dragonair. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what Dragonair sounds like, but Urian certainly looks like a Dragonair. Yep. You got it. Do you have a Karn? Because Karn's really not all that scary here, friend. Karn's fine. And then we have a lot of shots at Scapeshift next turn. Okay. 56 card deck, 4 Scape Shifts. Golos! Ooh. Okay. That's kind of neat. Our opponent has the technology. Cascading Cataract. Oh, that's cool. I mean, I could just kill it, but it's, it's cool. Because uh, I can go Bolt, Reset, Grow Spiral, Bolt. Bolt, Reset, um, Uro, Bolt. Yeah, I think that's how I'll do that. So, Bolt. And this is actually the fetch land that I wanted for Ren 6. So, kind of everything came up Millhouse. So, Sanctuary, put the Bolt on top. Yes. Yes. Pick up. Scalding Tarn. Play my Uro Trash. Draw. Put Scalding Tarn into play. Uro go Graveyard. Bolt again. Attack for five. So we're actually kind of killing them, which is sweet. And then play search for tomorrow past the turn, I guess. So I didn't find a piece of interaction. But on balance, I think it's kind of okay. Next turn I can Uro pretty much guaranteed. So I think that's fine. The only problem is that they play Emrakul again, and they have, and then I draw into Escape Shift, Stirrings, yep, can't stop that. Karn liberated. Karn is fine. You can have all the Karns you want, friend. Karn away. Probably about to regret, regret that. <laughs> There he is, the big boy. Exile's a card from their hand. Ooh, that's... Do I want to play the Growth Spiral in response? If I do, I can't guarantee that... Do I want to play this Growth Spiral? I do if I reset Lightning Bolt. Cool. Okay, I figured it out. So this is kind of slick. So we get to play Mystic Sanctuary. Reset Bolt. Play Growth Spiral so I can Uro. Sure. The What I was worried about was what if I draw Scape Shift and then I have to exile it? This way, I can bolt the Karn, and then ping with Renin 6 and attack it for 6, which will kill it. So, And then I'll still be able to Uro. So, pretty big upside on that play. I was just trying to figure out how, like, if I play Growth Spiral and I draw something that I don't want to discard, like, what, what then? And, uh... 
and I found the answer. Okay, green, green, blue, blue. Exile everything. Green, green, blue, blue. Uro's coming to kill you. Sequencing matters. Yep, of course. Valakut. Sure. Okay. Um, play another Abundant Growth. Draw a card. Probably causing my opponent to have a fit here. So attack Karn with everything. Okay. Then ping. Oh, hold on. It didn't take as much damage as I thought. Why not? Uh, I don't know where I screwed up, but I screwed up somewhere. It's fine. We'll just plus Ren and Six. And keep the last card in my hand. No, they are gonna. They can only uptick Karn. Uh, so I screwed up there. I don't know how. Uh, just give me two seconds. I just miscounted Karn, or I miscounted my damage. Okay. So let's hope this Ancient Stirrings doesn't mean I'm immediately dead. Uh, I do know where I screwed up the uh, the Karn sequence now. It's kind of okay, though, because now Ren 6 is on 7, although I guess my graveyard's empty, so. They got another Golos. Jeez Louise. Okay, well, at least they probably won't be able to activate it. What does it actually cost to play? 5? One, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. Oh my god. They can play and activate that Golos. Which. No, no, it costs seven to activate. Never mind. I thought it cost just five. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. Well, they're going to be able to do it next turn. Which means I probably should attack them for five and bolted them. But then Karn would be. Ooh, new Karn. I wonder if they're exiling my Uro. I bet they are. Because Uro draws me two cards. Huh. This is kind of a shame. Yep. Okay. Next turn they can play and activate uh, Golos, though, I think. Oh, that's really unfortunate. I guess we attack down Karn. Attack them for one. Probably supposed to ult Ren and Six and hold this land in my hand in case I draw a Cryptic. I think so. I didn't have the ability to pick up any lands from my graveyard, so I think that was the right play. So we just have to hope that they spin their Golos and miss here. They do have a good amount of air in their deck. There's lands, there's, well, there's not that many lands. If they get the absolute nuts on this thing, we're, uh, we're just donezo. So they need five to activate, so one, two, three, four, five, plus two, yeah. And then they have two green mana left afterwards. Interesting Tron build, that's really neat. We haven't hit any, 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 any of our uh, of our cryptic commands, which is a real shame. One cryptic anywhere along the line would have been insane. They hit another Golos, a Sylvan Scrying, and a Chromatic Sphere. Well, still in this. I guess we're still in this. Do they play the next Golos? Probably. Yeah. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped. 
They still got a Sanctum of Ugin. Blast Zone. Oh, they got the Sanctum on the last one. That makes sense. Now they're going to sell... I've been seeing this strategy before. I just can't remember what we were piloting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think we've run into it. It was. I think it was a Tron deck playing this. Uh, I have no idea what we were playing. I think we were playing an Urza deck at the time. I don't remember losing to it, but obviously. Okay, spin that wheel, baby. Come on. Come on, little deck. Just give me a scape shift. Can we just can we just win? There it is. Okay. I don't think we could possibly lose. Let's attack first and then. <sighs> scape shift deck really made me want it. Sky Noodle and Surprise Snake. It's the buddy cop comedy of this summer. Bye, opponent. So I have one, two. I have two mountains in play. Yeah. Opponent GG'd me. They don't need me to sequence it, which is great because it's very stressful. My opponent top decked their I win button and it didn't win the game. So then we top decked our I win button and we actually won the game. So it goes. So, so it goes. <laughs> how do you like the, the Planeswalker frame uh, on me, Roy? It's not actually a Planeswalker frame, but how do you like the magic card frame? Am I, am I like a real streamer now? I think I need to reposition it just a little bit. I think there's some white space at the bottom. There we go. Is it worth it for having shrunk the camera? It looks so natural, I didn't even think twice until you pointed it out. Oh, well, that's that's kind of good, I guess. I, th there's a lot of streamers who use a frame similar to that, but I just needed it to be old border. It had to be old border. It had to be blue. Uh, yeah, we're keeping this hand. This hand is A+. Plus. And we're against the D, the Dodds. Okay, hand is banging. Let's go. Let's go! Opponent has no companion. Whoa. Ooh, humans or goblins? Humans. Mm. Human. I smell human. So, turn to active Ice Fan Quaddle seems okay. Yep. Humans without Gigantha. I approve. Good for you. Good for you. You don't need that garbage. Get it out of here. Thalia, that's fine. My whole hand is creatures. Why three you, you, though? Uh, I think that's a reasonable cost for a Planeswalker. That's all. That's that's literally it. I think it's a reasonable cost for a Planeswalker. I probably should have made it two blue, blue, because that's the cost for Jace the Mind Sculptor, but I didn't want to be two. I think, I think Planeswalker should be fair and balanced magic cards. Yeah, it's, it's, there's no particular meaning. It's just, uh, I would have guessed one blue, 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 <laughs> red, green. <laughs> or even Wooberg. Yeah, but the, the thing, okay, so one of the things is um, the gold frame in the old border is like so-so. I like the blue frame a lot more. Is this meddling mage? It's got to be meddling mage, why they're tanking so long. Yeah, we're going to play this Ice Fang proactively, um, just in case. I don't think it's really likely they would have named Ice Fan Quaddle, but it's fine. And then I'm happy to take three from this Thalia, and there's Lightning Bolt. That's perfect. I wonder if they named Bolt on this Meddling Mage. If so, well done, opponent. But, yeah. So this turn is just going to be like Uro, Shock, Uro, Tapland, I think. And then leave Ice Fang back to block the Meddling Mage next turn. <laughs> they kept the one lander with noble hierarch and thalia against the Orion deck. That is so ballsy. Should I just bolt? Should I bolt their noble hierarch this turn? Is that what I should do instead of anything else? That seems like 
possibly insane. Loan Cephalon Empress. Sure, I mean, yeah. She does cost three and a blue, though. I don't know why. Is it just the, the old frame that's like the first card you think of? One of the first cards I think of with the old frame for some reason is um, Boomerang. They They did, in fact, choose Lightning Bolt. Wow, good for them. Okay, so we're just going to go Shock, Uro, Tap Land. Yeah, I think so. The first blue card I've seen with the old friend. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, put in an island. Seems good. Renin 6 is 6, so that means next turn Renin 6 is going to eat their Noble Hierarch. And they can't attack with the Meddling Mage or I'll eat it with the Ice Fang Quaddle, so that, that seems fine. So, if they don't have a land here, and if for some reason they attack, they're just going to be donezo. What are the second meddling? No, what's blue-green? Phantasma On meddling mage. Naming Ice Fang Quaddle, I guess? I had, if I had to guess, I'd say Ice Fang. Then they're only going to attack with Thalia. I'm going to play Ren and Six, ping the Hierarch. Then Ren and Six is at two... Urian. Oh, that, yeah, okay, okay. That's legit, that's legit. Because next turn I can play the Urian, and yeah, yeah, that seems fine. I think we're going to annihilate my opponent this game. I would have thought getting Thalia off the board was more important than a Hierarch. But killing the Hierarch means they might just stop playing Magic totally. So... Seems like significant upside, my friend. If I kill the Hierarch, the only thing they can play is a Hierarch. They can't even play an Aether Vial. So I think we go Shock. If they end up killing my Renin Six, I'm like pretty happy about it. And they have to go pretty hard after my Renin Six here. Because if they don't, it's going to eat their Thalia and their Meddling Mage. And then I get to play the Ice Fang and probably just kind of win the game on the spot. Because with the Ice Fang in play, I eat both their Meddling Mages. Or the two Ice Fangs in play, I eat both their Meddling Mages. And then Bolt the Thalia or play a second Ren and Six, ping the Thalia. So if they didn't hit a land here, this is insane. Okay, this is basically over. I just block it. Dude. Slow and steady wins the race, I guess, Thalia. So I can ping this meddling mage, play Ice Fang Quaddle, play Urian, draw a bunch of stuff. Oh, I guess they can play Champion of the Parish. That's fine, though. Ice Fang, draw a card. Boop. Hey, that's a good one. So what would I rather do? Uh, abundant Growth and Urian? Yeah. That is 100% what I'd rather do. Draw three. Seems pretty good. I can't abundant growth in Urian because of mana. Um, I can go ping meddling mage, play second Ren and six ping meddling mage, bolt Thalia. Yeah, and then play the Abundant Growth. Sure. Yeah. Three, two, one. Yep, cool. Ping Meddling Mage. Oops. Isn't Mage on Urian, though? Well, that was the one I could kill with the Ren 6 because it's, a, it's an illusion. It's an illusory Meddling Mage, so one ping kills it. And then, yep. Pew. 
fetch island, and then abundant growth. So their best possible draw it's like land Thalia's lieutenant, I think. Noble higher. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so they want to kill my Ren six. They have attack with both, which is fine. This is perfect. Lock here, no problem. There's no wrong way to eat this Reese's, but I think we just go kill your meddling mage, play Astrolabe, draw a million cards with uh, your iron. Sky Noodle. Noodle of the sky. And we drew third Ren and Six in the game where our Ren and Six has been dying left, right, and center. And we even get to reset this one. So it's not actually in danger of dying. This is great. Yup. Sky Noodle is my friend. I need to get one of the extended border Sky Noodle. <laughs> I win the game. Really? Do you think? Do you think I won that one? I don't know. I think we should go longer. Okay. So I think we got six coming in here. Uh, I would like to cut some scape sh or some cryptics. Maybe just one. Uh, Ran six is nuts, although not quite as much on the draw. Man. This is this is actually a really tricky one. I feel like something like this because. Search for Tomorrow is kind of finicky against Thalia's and Meddling Mages. Intergust is not great, but it's better than better than nothing. I don't see anything missing. Yeah. Yeah, it seems fine. There's a lot of ways we can lose uh, against humans, but uh, <sighs> certainly possible we win this. And then we've got game three, of course. Of course, of course. Four cryptic, two red and six instead of three and three. I kind of like three and three. Because red and six is super, super nuts in a lot of situations. Uh, but I, I I mean, I'm not, you're not wrong. Do you mean four red and six, two cryptics? Again, it's fine. The thing is, cryptic can win games that no other card can. So it's like, yeah. It's, you know, I would have to talk to someone smarter than me to to get the answer. Play a lot more games of, of the matchup. I've played a lot of these matchups with, with Ren and Six and Cryptic Command in the same deck, and I, I could not honestly tell you what I think the correct answer is. I mean, I, I think I know what the correct answer is, and I'm, you know, playing to that. Can I keep this? Uh, they mulliganed... Get Astrolabe on one, Abundant Growth on two. We've got enough land drops to play Magic, and we've got a Cryptic Command to sort of bridge the gap. But we have a Valakut, and we have no one-mana interaction. I'm going to ship it. This is much better. Much, much better. The mana sucks out loud. 
but we can fetch on turn one for Mountain to play Lightning Bolt and then play the Astrolabe on two with our tap lands. So that's fine. We're going to bottom this Cryptic and we can get double red for Anger. So this is actually pretty, pretty good. They mold a five? Wonderful. Good, good. Hey, Roy, you want to type in exclamation point record? I want to do it, but I'm scared. I think we're two and one in this league. It's just like tonight is just flying by considering I'm playing 80 card control piles. But I guess, uh, yeah, I guess uh, Larynx Punchworthy would be proud because we're playing win conditions wherever he be. He had some kind of exhausting trip from the. Wow. Ooh. I mean, it happens. I um, when we were in Columbus, when we were at the SCG trios at Columbus, uh, it was like round seven. So the one before we drew and we got uh, dropped out. I was playing Niv Mizzet. I'm sure you recall, and um, and um, my opponent mulls to five on the draw. And I go, like, land go, and then they go land, like, champion the parish. I'm like, land Renin six, and that was, like, the whole... That was... And that was, like, you know, that's that's where it is. Sometimes that's how she be. You're, you're one of the main people who hangs out here. I, I respect your opinion. How important do you think it is that you, the viewer, are able to see what my opponent is typing? Um, if I covered the entire right side in the black box, and then on the bottom chunk I had the card display, would that be um, the preview pane? So if I put this down here so you could see bigger, um, whatever I mouse over, you'd be able to see it bigger. Kind of like that. Would this be something you'd be interested in? You couldn't care less, okay. We'll, we'll, we will try that out uh, at some point soon. Because that's how Jeff Hoagland has his uh, stream set up, and I, I like it a lot. Okay, this hand. Um, it's really good, except for the complete lack of snow. We're against Gyruda. Okay, hold on. We're against Gyruda, and we're on the draw. Yeah, this is unacceptable. Potentially salt. Well, and I can always read the salt for posterity, right? Okay, this hand is better against Gyruda. So we're going to go turn one, suspend search. So I'm going to keep this. And then I think I'm bottoming growth spiral. Growth spiral requires me to have more lands in hand is nowhere near as good as Uro. Yeah. This hand has its downsides, but it's potentially pretty good. We don't get to see the Zach greeting. Yeah, I mean, at this point you might, like, I don't know, regulars of the channel... Like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, I guess that's cost of doing business. So next turn, we're going to use our snow land to play the astrolabe. And then if we draw an untapped land, we can play Cavern of Souls and play the Abundant Growth. And if we don't draw an untapped land, we can just play the Valakut. So that we can play the Uro the turn after that. We are on a race against the clock here. Okay, so we already hit the untapped land. So that makes everything easier. Um, we want to turn this forest into a blue source. It doesn't really matter how we do that. Do, 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 tighten up. So our opponent is playing a variety of Gyruda deck. Um, likely they're playing the good one, which is the uh, Primeval Titan Field Gyruda deck, which is not as all-in combo. So the, the normal Gyruda deck is the sort of, you could refer to it as Oops All Clones. Uh, but there's been a sort of slightly superior version that has kicked up more recently that is um, 
more value driven, plays things like Primeval. They didn't have a piece of ramp. Okay, that's that's really, really good for us. So if we draw a scape shift, I think we're gonna be able to erase them pretty pretty well here. Okay, so I can play two different tap lands this turn. Because I have nothing else that I'm to Oh. Could I have played Uro into Uro? No, I couldn't. Okay. No, I think I could have. No, I couldn't. That's my land drop for turn. Yeah, yeah, I could. Okay, okay, okay. Didn't screw up. Thought I screwed up. Didn't screw up. Wow! They, they could have been playing Oops All Clones, but it's okay, because we're playing Oops All Lands. <laughs> oh, they're going to... Oh! Okay, they didn't miss. Okay, this is a crazy piece of technology that the Gyruda deck now plays. So, two white, blue. Aether Mage is touched. Two white, blue. Reveal the top four cards of your library. You can put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. At the beginning of their next end step, they return that creature to the owner's hand. So if they play it on my end step, they get to keep that creature over the turn. Which is nuts. Is this Titan or Gyruda? Giruda! Giruda! All right, what did they flip? Uh, nothing? Wow, they whiffed. Full whiff. Whew. And we flip a cryptic. I'll take it. Wow. I, I, wow. I can't, I don't. Whew. Okay, then. So, giant... Blue, red, green. Play the Titan out of my hand. Land. So it's Cryptic or Uro this turn. Uro lets me get another land into play, which lets me cast Abundant Growth. Cryptic lets me interact with them, although... Oh no, this is on plant, so they can't. Okay. I think holding up cryptic gives me the highest chance of getting to combo kill the next turn. So. They flipped a good number of cards out of their deck. It doesn't look like they play any quote unquote interaction. I think they're pretty linear. Do you know how they win? So they Gyruda usually into another like six drop, like a primeval titan, and then they just kind of house you with value. Um, I think they have Dragon Lord Colagons in their in their deck. Uh, yeah, so uh, I've played against it once before, and I think I watched uh, Zandi play it against it once before. Um, so I think. I think what they do is they just like they tried to Gyruda into um, like a flicker card or a Titan for value, but because of the way that they set themselves up here, they can't they can't really do anything more, and their uncounterable card type is Plant. So you know if they play a Karyatid, I'm fine. I just didn't think I was in danger of dying this turn specifically, and especially if I have Cryptic Command up, whereas, like, next turn I can get my Uro and still have Cryptic up and trade my Uro for their Gyruda pretty freely. Yeah, that's fair. It's prime time here. So we're just going to counter draw that. Um, I don't... No, I do want to get a Mystic Sanctuary. Because I don't have one in play. I'm getting Mystic Sanctuary here. But I'm going to... Um, what's, what's the word I want? Neglect? I'm not putting... I'm not putting the... Uh, I'm not putting my um, Search for more on top. I'm going to go counter... Target spell and bounce the sanctuary. Oh, no, no, I'm not. They just have a ghost quarter. I still want it in play. 
But this is a uh, Mystic Sanctuary anyway, so it's fine. I don't, I don't need to do Cryptic Looping yet. That, that was not... Those were not the words I was looking for, Roy, but uh, I'll take it. Okay, so we win. Um, Ghost Quarter could, in theory, fizzle us, but it's not going to because I'm going to be smart. So... Got 19. Do 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 be do 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 So green, green. One, two. Oh. Oh, I did the thing. Green, green. One, two. Scape shift. GG! Nice combo deck, nerd. <laughs> so, the only thing I have to leave in play is my Valakut, and I can get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, I can get seven mountains and a Valakut, which means. Between the two Valakuts and the seven mountains. Um, yeah. Seems good. Forty two damage. Yeah. GG. And there's no way that they can stop me with Ghost Quarter. They could Ghost Quarter my Valakut. And that would mean we'd only deal. Uh, I'd sacrifice everything, which would mean 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we'd get Valakut plus 8 mountains, which is, okay, are they electing to do that? They are. So their gamble here is that I only have one Valakut in my deck, which is obviously not true. Obviously, they, they, they don't know that, but um, they didn't know they couldn't beat me there, so that's a totally legitimate line. Um, this is fine. Um, we'll tap these for mana before we resolve our Valakut. Or escape shift. Uh, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's all of them. Whoa, Doctor! This guy's going big and he's not going home, but the other guy is going home in a body bag. Goodness gracious me! I did actually click on every single land in my deck, but Moto is having a time. Okay, the Valakut is glowing. That's all I really need. There we go. No, 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 no. Oh, yes. And save targets. That one. Always yes. This doesn't seem like enough triggers. Always yield. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it was. Agreeing just when I didn't see the triggers. It's it's because they have to ask you about whether or not you're um you're uh having your fetch lands enter untapped. But here's the thing. You can choose to pay to have them um enter the battlefield untapped for their own replacement effect, which does not help you because Scape Shift is going to add an extra replacement effect that puts them in tapped anyway. Would you like to pay two lands to keep your lands tapped? Exactly. That is exactly what it's asking you. Uh, I don't think I need Veil of Summer here. Um, oh, Aether Gust for their Titans. Yeah, that's that's money. And then Dispute for their Gyrudas and they, the Aether Mage's Touch is blue. I think... One Ice Fang Quaddle could go out. Or... No, that's probably the best choice. Ren, one Ren and Six. But yeah, it's essentially... Would you like to pay two life and your land will still enter the battlefield tapped? Like, I, no? Yes? I don't know. What I do know is that this deck box, because I think it's, like, commander-sized... Um, because, like, this is it with a double-sleeved 60-card deck. Uh, I think it'll work for a double-sleeved 80-card uh, deck with sideboard, which is great. I'm actually kind of happy about that. So 
Thank you, Wizards of the Coast, from save, for saving me from all this extra room in my deck box. Um, I'm glad that the new size of a deck is 95, which is essentially the size of a commander deck. So, like, 100-card boxes are suddenly more relevant than ever. Although it doesn't mean you don't have a lot of room for tokens, but... I almost greeted them again. Man, sometimes. Uh, this hand is fine. It's, like, really clunky, but... I think this can draw everything I needed to. They kept their seven. Deck box was partially covered by your frame. Oh well, it's the it's the monolith from um, from Ultimate Guard. You know the one. And the lighting, I'm sure, was terrible for actually looking inside it. This hand is sick. What is up, Jiggy Wiggy? Um, you can now check um the button below my stream to get a schedule of this week and you can see uh what deck i'm playing on each day i'm going to be playing the fair lands deck on one of the days and i think i scheduled the um the turbo chalice deck one of you can check and, and uh confirm for me yeah growth spiral is pretty good working on a new true abomination what what is your new abomination Oh man, how guy-rooted am, am I about to get? Hell yeah, we'll check. Nice. Chalice Ninjas. Go on. Okay, okay. How did you, First of all, how did you get there? How did you get to Chalice Ninjas? What kind of wonderful things are you on, and how do I get some? I guess I could have played Sanctuary there. No, this is my third island, right? Yeah, this is my third island. I can reset Growth Spiral, play Growth Spiral, reset Growth Spiral, and get a million land drops. And as long as they don't combo me this turn, we're going to be in good shape. Mystic Sanctuary, reset Growth Spiral. Then I get to go Growth Spiral, draw Growth Spiral, drop in Mystic Sanctuary, reset Growth Spiral, play Ice Fang. Okay, cool. Neat. Deck is doing things. Chalice ninjas. I want to SSG a chalice, and I want a ninja, but I don't want to lose them to removal. Okay. Interesting. I don't... I'm not sure that you have sold me on this. Good ninjutsu enablers are Ornithopter and that Phyrexian 1-1 flyer. Um, the um, Vault Scourge. Bolt Scourge. And those both dodge the Chalice on one, I see. Rip. Uh, I'm going to respond to that. Green, blue. Growth Spiral. Okay. Uh, that will be in the graveyard before I have to put this trigger on the stack, I believe. But I could do it the other way if I am worried about that. Let's find out the hard way. Find out the hard way. Cool. Yeah, that's what I thought. This is a kind of neat sequence. Put that on the top, and then I have another growth spiral to pick it up again. So they play rest in peace. So again, weird. I'm pretty sure force of despair is actually a good card. Oh baby, Roy. Are you playing the um, the big ninja? That's blue and black. You have to be, right? Because it pitches for both. Like, obviously you don't have to be, but... Okay, we're putting the Valkit, and then the next turn, okay. So, it's my turn four, and I'm on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lands. So, so that's the thing. The fact that they took away my graveyard is a little inconvenient for this Ren and Six, so we're probably just going to pass through their turn and play Ice Fang, Ice Fang, and then on my turn play Urian and draw two. And we'll still be able to grow Spiral after that. Scourge also pitches. Yep, 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 fair enough. I wonder if they have Titan here. Titan will be pretty slow, so I'm not worried about it. Giruda, though. Giruda can go right off. It's a shame I don't have any of my interaction. I mean, I guess I get to Ice Fang in response. 
Get her there! Get her there! Hit the deck! Oh, they have death touch now. Surprise, Snack. Ooh. Womp womp. Girudo resolve. I don't even get to see what's that. They just flipped in a Sylvan Karyotid. Womp womp. My poor opponent. Just no luck on the Demon Krakens. Roy, those words are as true now as they were when I said them, right? I am happy someone's turning on the snakes. And, you know, that's just where I want to be in life. You know, I'm pro snaker. Do I want more forests? Yes. Because I've been choked on green a bunch. Green, blue, draw, put a land in, play Ren and Six, then play. Oh, nice. That is, yup. This is everything I want in life right now. Green, play Abundant Growth, put it wherever. My Urian is growing in power. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nah. All right. I guess I'm not feeding a Ren and Six to the Demon Kraken. He's Demon Crackalackin. Snack Love. Snack Love is Snack Life, all right? Snack Love deserves as much respect as any other kind of love. Somewhere in this world, there's my beautiful friend Adler. Tis a snack. And uh, he knows how I feel. He's got beautiful feathery wings like an Ice Fang Quaddle in his heart. I heard my snack's name. <laughs> he sleeps a lot. Well, he's got a very stressful job being a snake, you know. He's got to run all those Wall Street, run all those Wall Street things. <laughs> if only. All right, if we survive the next turn, we are, we are, we got some serious money. Yeah, Adler, Adler is a little shit disturber in the best possible way because he is a burrowing snake, but he likes to climb. Is this Titan for Field of the Dead? If so, I am just fine with that. Go to combat. Okay. You want to trade your demon kraken for one of my snakes? I don't know how I feel about that. All right. Fine. I guess they're here to die. I wonder if they have a removal spell for the other one to turn off death touch, but then I already have, I have four snow lands, so. So my, my snake would not lose death touch. I don't trust him enough yet, like he can roam in a small space. Ah, backup Garuda. Sure. Flips into Titan. What did they flip on my side? Anything good? Two scape shifts? Oh, that's brutal. A revan and two scape shifts. What did they flip on their side? Did they whiff? Kozilek. Oh my god. At least they don't get to cast it, but holy hell. That's a big boy. Uh, might be in more trouble than I thought, especially because they milled two of my uh, two of my escape shifts. How much does Kozlek cost? It's like 12? Oh, 10. Jeez, that is super cheap. Yeah, they have nine mana. I mean, it's not super cheap, but like their deck is all ramp, so. That, that is good for us. Why is that good for us? Say no, we we can't, dude. You know why these Renin sixes have been terrible all game? Their rest in peace that they played on turn two. <laughs> I thought this was a different game. No, no. For some reason, they're tanking infinitely on this. No, no. Oh, it's because they flipped another guy, Ruda. I wonder if they're. There's no way they get greedier than going for Kozlek, right? I mean, it's possible. 
Oh, yay to Oh No. Yeah, that's the one. Zach, don't you see? Don't you see? They went for the next guy, Ruta? That's insane. You're a madman. You're absolutely mad. What did they flip off of me? At least they didn't get another escape shift. And they whiffed on their side? Oh my god. Insanity. My opponent's a mad person. They have no idea what they're doing. Could have put Kozilek, the Butcher of Truth, into play. Decided, no, no. Let's spin again. This is... This is this is not indicative of how this matchup should go. This is not indicative of Gyruda deck playing Rip are like Astrolabe decks playing Blood Moon. Yes, yes they are. You would think it would shut the deck off. You would think it would be in any way functional in a way that makes sense. It's not. Go figure. Uh, one, two... Okay, so we're, we, we need to get... We need to start, start getting some mountains into play now, I think. Oh, man. With the Garudas milling me, and... Oh, man. That is such a shame. Uro. Oh. Uh, one, two, three... F so, one, two, three. Is that it? Yeah, I just have three mountains in play. Not impressive. Oh. Green, red, blue... Womp womp. Sad Uro. I mean, game three. But. Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Well, I mean. <laughs> I guess we could just win anyway. Sure. Why not? So they're at 12. Um, I have one, two three, four mountains in play. So I only need to get three more, but I'll get the other Valkit. And yeah. Okay. Probably should have checked Exile and saw that everything was, was hunky-dory, but it is. I was pretty sure I was tracking enough. Yeah, okay. Actually, it was kind of close. Yeah, it was pretty close there. We were, we were tight on mountains. But uh, we got it. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not tight on triggers. We're just tight on enough mountains to get the Valka triggers going. Uh, and save targets. That person, super, super, super dead. Yay! Good enough for government work. I have a quick rules quirk to bring up after this game. Uh, yeah, what's your rules query before I get to the wrap-up? Or would you prefer I do the wrap-up on this deck before that? Because uh, we snapped off another 4-1. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so what do I have to say about this deck? This deck was everything that I thought it would be. Um, this is a nice mid-range control deck. Uh, as I was quoted by Roy as calling these kind of decks once before, upper mid-range control decks. These are my favorite kind of decks in Modern, with the biggest difference between this one and other ones being that there is a more dedicated ramp package, as well as an auto-win button in a uh, nice wholesome deck. That's right. Uh, as well as an auto win button in the scape shift um, construction. Um, obviously, Bob the dog knows what they're doing in terms of at least choosing lists if they didn't make it the, the shredded wheat of mid range deck. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, this will definitely get you through the day. Um, but with the biggest difference between this and a lot of the decks that I love normally being that the slight more dedication to ramping and the combo kill which is obviously pretty effective. Um, this deck goes way over the top of the Luris decks, as you saw in our match against the Luris deck. Um, we let them have Luris in play. We let them play stuff over and over and over again. We just had a Urian. We generated a bunch of um, value back, and then we scapeshifted for the win. 
Some other Urian decks, like my Iceberg Control deck, will use that to stabilize, and then you'll board wipe them and put yourself ahead that way. This one just chooses to sort of go all in and win the game sometimes. Um, the only match that we lost was against... It wasn't Tron. Um, but whatever it was... I can't quite remember right now. But whatever it was, we, we gave ourselves a lot of shots at the win in Game 3 and couldn't quite get there. Um, but obviously, had we played percentages a little bit differently, we would have been okay and, and, and gotten there. So, great deck, uh, great construction. I specifically like having the four red and sixes, even though some of the versions of this deck would issue it. Was it Prowess? I think we beat Black Red. No, maybe it was that last game against Black Red Prowess. Um, that was, yeah, that was a tight one. Um, we did have some softer games and matches in this league uh including the humans deck that we played against they had a really rough game one where they had one drop in into um one land one one noble hierarch and then they were just kind of stuck muddling around for a while um so i would not elect to make a lot of changes to this deck for now it seems well situated and well set up for the meta uh learning a little bit better what you need in the main deck what you need on the sideboard i find it interesting that there's two ofs there's two anger of the gods and two flame slashes two weather the storms and two aether gusts so it's a it's an interesting split of things considering it's an 80 card deck which means you're much like less likely to find the sideboard cards that you sideboard in unless you sideboard in three or four of them. And even then, like, you know. But I will say that one of the advantages to playing these very powerful mid-range decks with cards like Cryptic Command in the main deck, Uro in the main deck, and a Scape Shift Kill is that you don't need Haymaker uh, sideboard cards. You can play sideboard cards that shore up your matchups against certain strategies, you don't need to beat them with your sideboard cards because your main deck is going to kill them just fine. Uh, you just want to make sure that you have the time to do so. So Anger of the Gods and Flame Slash, these buy you time against things like Dryad of the Elysian Grove or Wide Boards. Um, Veil of Summer buys you time against Black Discard and some counter spells. You can win against blue matchups. Same with Mystical Dispute. And a lot of these cards will come in, like Veil of Summer and Mystical Dispute can both come in against blue decks because you're proactively playing um, Scape Shift to win the game. So having a one-mana way to defend it or two one-mana ways to defend it can be the make or break moment in, in that match or in that game specifically. Anywho, uh, it's been a blast tonight. We had a really good run with two of the decks from the challenge. So I'm going to send y'all out of here with some music and thank you so much for dropping by. I will be live tomorrow eight till late. Uh, my schedule on the stream lets you know what decks I'm going to be playing all week long. And we'll also be back on Sunday with paper Mario, the thousand years door, the second uh, paper Mario game. So you can tune in for that for a more casual stream. There might be some bonus magic stuff on the Sunday as well. We'll see how we're feeling when we get there. I'm trying to be a little bit more organized as we're rocking and rolling into our second and a half month of lockdown here in Ontario. Uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. You can always catch my live streams. I'm here on Twitch. I've got my schedule down below. I've got my memes uh, linked up. Oh, of course, Jiggy. Thank you so much for your support. And, and most of that, I just mean showing up and watching. Because really, I just like having people to interact with while we're exploring the wonderful modern format here, playing some great decks, and hanging out with some good people. Um, I am going to keep the stream live for just a little bit longer as I return my cards and I feel the rules question from my boy, Roy the Boy, Pasa Rathen Nathan. Um, and uh, so, oh, Zanman, you just missed our stream. We, we knocked off two four ones playing uh two of the urian decks from the challenge mad sad sorry brah if you pitch me a pile of money i'll keep streaming i'm kidding i won't i'm tired maybe depends on how much money okay uh let's see i'm gonna get my cards returning and uh let's answer some of the rules questions